skincare routine, I use a facial spray, but I usually hold it like right next to my face and just blast it. And so this, I'm trying to get like an even coverage and I'm not coordinated enough to do it. Hopefully this will be better. Hey guys, welcome back. Today I am showing you my go-to foundation routine of the moment. We're gonna do foundation, concealer, powder, and a few other steps that I tend to include every day. This video is not a voiceover. I just brilliantly forgot to record an intro. So if you wanna see my go-to products and methods, then just keep watching. The foundation concoction I have been enjoying recently is a combination of the two Maybelline Fit Me foundations. Now I did a review and demo and comparison video of these two formulas a number of weeks ago. I will link that for you down below if you want to go check that out. But what I've discovered since then is that my favorite way to wear these is mixed together. It just gives you the best qualities of both. It's long lasting, it's pretty medium coverage, and it just has a really natural look on my skin. Now, if you have more oily skin, you probably want to just use these together. But if you have more dry skin like I do, I like to mix in a little bit of the L'Oreal Magic Lumi Primer to this combo. I don't use a primer on my skin before this because I just don't find that it makes that much of a difference for me. To apply this, I like to do it in sections. So I will do sort of the bottom, maybe third of my face first, place this around, and then my favorite foundation brush is the Real Techniques Buffing Brush. This is part of the core collection. They also make the Expert Face Brush, which you can buy separately, but honestly, they're the same thing. Just buy whichever one you want. So I start by really just patting the product in, so I'm not moving it around too much. And then I'll make my way to the other areas of the face. Once I have the foundation on, I do like to go back in and just buff it lightly to make sure it's all blended evenly. The next up is concealer, and because I have considerable darkness under my eyes, I do go in with a color corrector first. I did a whole video on yellow color correctors from the drugstore. I've got a cheaper cheaper on that that I will link below if you're interested, but I am using the Maybelline color corrector in yellow. And I find that yellow is a good choice if you have extremely pale skin and your under eye circles are more purple than blue. That's why I go yellow instead of peachy or salmon like a lot of people do. So this I just pat on right where I need it the most with my finger. I don't want to get too much because it is a pretty thick consistency. And then I pat it in with the Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush. And for concealer, I am using the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer, which I broke into because MAC apparently hates its customers and makes crappy, crappy packaging. Rant over, I do love this concealer though, so if you're dedicated enough to break into it, it's worth it. This is the Real Techniques foundation brush that comes in that same core collection I was talking about earlier. So I put this right under the eyes, kind of concentrating it where the most darkness is making sure to get in that inner corner where a lot of darkness can lurk. I put a little on my nose because I tend to get red on my nose and it just sort of covers it up and helps my foundation last a little bit longer. Same thing around the sides of the nose. And then if I feel like it, I'll put a little bit on the chin as well. Those are kind of the main spots that I tend to conceal. And then I take a little bit on the top of the eyes because the primer that I use doesn't have any color to it and I like to cover up the discoloration before I go in with my primer. And then to blend all of this in from that same set, I guess this should have been a video about the Real Techniques Core Collection, I use the Real Techniques Contour Brush to just pat it in. To set the under eyes, I've been loving the Lorac Wet Dry Oil Free Powder. I use just the sponge that comes in the compact for this. So what I will do is 
pat it over the under eye circles and just let it sit. I'm not baking, I'm not doing that like cake on tons and tons of powder because for me that's just overkill, but I do like to press it right on top. Again, you're not moving the product around and it really helps set the concealer. It does add a little bit of extra coverage as well, which I like. If your skin is more oily than mine, you're definitely gonna wanna set the whole face with powder if that's something you like. And I have a few powders that I do like to use that I've been using recently. The first is the Rimmel Stay Matte Pressed Powder, which is just my drugstore go-to. And if you are oily, this is great. I mean, it is super matte, works really well. Recently, I've been trying the It Cosmetics, what is this, the Bye Bye Pores Poreless Finish HD Micro Powder, which is kind of a miracle because it does slightly diminish the appearance of your pores, so that's kind of awesome. However, it's loose. And I think they have a pressed version now, but every time I use this, it's like poofs of powder everywhere and I'm choking and I'm just not quite talented enough. I do like this one. I have been using it recently. And then the other thing I've been trying to use recently because I've been trying to find more ways to use this palette is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette. And what I do is I mix these two lighter shades because on me, this one is too dark and this one is too light and shimmery, but I find that if I combine those two that it just sort of has a nice finish to it. So this is what I'm going to use today and I'm going to use the e.l.f. Complexion Brush. This is not a powder that's going to make your skin really matte, so if you're looking for that, don't go this route. Now I'm going to go back in with that same contour brush and just brush away the excess powder under my eyes. So that's my concealer and foundation and powder done. So I guess you can consider this the end of my foundation routine. I am gonna do a couple more things because this is just sort of the base that I use every day. So I always like to fill in my eyebrows and my go-to is the Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Kit in Ash Brown. If you've been around this channel for a while, you're not surprised. This is another thing that I did a cheap or cheaper on. So I will link that video down below as well. And I have been loving using the Real Techniques Bold Metals angled liner brush, which is around here somewhere. Here it is. Because it has a super, super small, skinny, angled brush thing. So I'm gonna go in with this lighter powder here, do the brows, and then take a little bit of the darker to define parts that I want a little bit more definition. To set my brows, I absolutely love the NYX Tinted Brow Mascara. I have this in Brunette, and I think I like this because it does add a little bit of color, but it just has the best little spoolie thing. So I feel like when I add the gel, it also brushes them out perfectly, and I like that. The next thing that I'm going to include in this base routine is bronzer because when your face is this pale, you need just a little bit of color. My favorite, favorite bronzer recently is one that's actually back in the same ambient lighting palette. It's the darkest color here. And if you're not super fair like I am, this is not going to be a bronzer on you. Hourglass does make bronzers now, which I'm sure are beautiful. So I'm gonna take the e.l.f. complexion brush again. I'm just gonna put this mainly on the back of my cheekbones and a little bit on the forehead. There's one more step that I wanna show you, but I have to do the rest of my makeup first. So I'm gonna hop off camera to do that and I'll be right back. So the last step to this whole routine is also the newest to me, and it is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water. Now, I know that this is marketed as both a primer and a setting spray, and I've tried using it as a primer, but to be honest, it doesn't make a huge difference to me. How I do like to use this, though, and what I think makes a huge difference in my makeup is as a setting spray. It helps all the products really sink into the skin. It gets rid of any sort of powdery look. It really helps the highlight pop and I love my highlight so I like that it adds a little bit of extra glow to that and I think it prolongs the wear of my makeup a little bit. That's not a huge issue for me but this I love. So thank you Krista. I got this for my girl Krista in our swap. If you saw that swap you may have noticed that I am not very good at spraying shit on my face. I believe I sprayed it and then had to like find it with my face because I missed and I'm not gonna lie I'm not much better yet. That was smooth, that was really good, I'm proud of myself. 
So that's it. Here are the final results of my current favorite foundation routine and base makeup. Let me know what you think down below. Do you use any of these products? Do you like them? What things do you think might be better? Or what have you been loving lately? Because I'm still testing out other things and want new ideas. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. I really, really appreciate it. Remember to hop on over to Instagram and Twitter and follow me at Robin's Cup so we can hang out all the time and hit that subscribe button. So I'll see you guys here next time. Bye. And it is the Smashbox Photo Benefit. I don't like the idea that we're encouraged to spend more because it's 20% off. Because I'm no math genius, but even I know it's not really that great of a deal.